Good morning, welcome back to BT. The book is called Will to Win. That is the newest book by former dragon and current shark Robert Herjavec. And he shares his recipe for leading, competing, and succeeding. And he joins us with a look at the new book. Let's get right to that. The will to win. Is that the distinguishing thing between the winners and the losers, the person who's in first and the person who's second? Is it just their desire? Whoa. Um, well, I don't think there's such thing as losers. I, I don't like to classify people that way, but... So the I person who comes in last in a Ferrari race with you, they're just a different kind of winner? You know, every time you lose at something, you're one step closer to winning the next time. The difference between successful people and not successful people, okay. let's call it that sure. way, are people give up. People wake up every morning, they have doubt, they have fear, they lose in a Ferrari race or they lose in a race, and then they just give up. The, the, the hardest thing in life to learn is to lose. Winning's easy. You win, you're happy, you get a high five, your friends are happy. It's your ability to take a loss, get up the next day, dust yourself off, and keep going. And one of the neat things about the book is that you, uh, you go through a lot of the learning points in your life, and you also touch on... I have lost at everything you can imagine. Seriously, we have, I have been beat up and put down, and everything that can go wrong has gone wrong for me, but I, I just kept going. Give me, give me one example. I, I like the fact that you're talking to marathons about uh, how you start off in the first mile, ready to set new world records. <laughs> Because most of us can relate to that. Jogs often so, start off yeah, really good. I, I, have a, I have a mental strength, but sometimes not a rationale. So I trained for a marathon for about 20 days. It didn't seem that hard to me. And it started off, and I had an incredible five mile out. And I thought I was going to qualify for Boston, and I barely finished. But you finished. But I finished. And what I learned out of it is, you know, people always say to me, how do you do it? You're such a confident guy. The way you get confidence is you simply do it. So I finished the first marathon, which gave me the confidence to know I can do better the next time. One of the fascinating things in the book is you draw on other people's experiences that don't seem to relate to your life. Uh, George St. Pierre, uh, MMA fighter. What does a businessman learn from a guy who punches people for a living? Well, we were just talking about that outside. And you know, the difference between the UFC fighter and the rest of us is no one hits us in the face every morning. So that. That really brings things into focus. What I learned out of him is it's all about being efficient. It's not the strong, it's not the big, it's not the rich, it's not the poor that will inherit the earth, it'll be the efficient. You don't see too many dinosaurs walking around anymore and they were really big animals. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, great. So not being a dinosaur is an important lesson. So how do you keep Adaptability. That? Adaptability. So I've never been the smartest guy in the room, but I feel pretty confident that if you drop me in the middle of a jungle, I'll figure out a way to survive. It's your ability to survive in any situation that separates the people that do well from those that don't. I want to quickly talk TV if we can too. And uh, you do a great job of answering, I think, most TV fans' questions about uh, Dragon's Den and Shark's Tank. I'm curious as if to whether people have gotten better at pitching you. Are this many seasons into shows like this, have people learned from, from past pitches? You would think. And no. <laughs> we, we see it all. I mean, we've seen it all. But people understand what we want. So they become better at pitching. I think that the crazy pitches have become crazier. Right. And the good ones have become better. Uh, you mentioned uh, the other people in the Shark Tank and what they're worth. I'm curious as to whether uh, in a room full of rich guys, if everybody knows who the richest guy in the room is. Yeah, it's kind of like a pecking order, is right? It, is it, it really? It, well, it, it is when Mark Cuban's there. Cause Mark, <laughs> Mark Cuban's worth billions of dollars. Yes. Right? But um, no, you know, wealth is, is never, wealth is measured and it's individual for everyone. So I, I never wake up and say, I gotta make another million or I gotta make another 20 million or whatever. I just want to be successful. So I've, I'm a little different than Kevin. There are certainly people on the show that wake up every day and say, I want to make more money. I wake up every day and say, I want to be a little bit better than I was the day before. I think if you're successful, the money will follow. And I think that's part of the problem in our society today is people do it just for the money. Right. They do it just for the money to make another buck. And, and I never believe they'll uh, work out in the end. If you don't mind, we're going to have you stick around. We're going to actually give away an autographed copy of the book in mere moments, but we're going to take a awesome. break. Uh, you'll find all Robert's info already available through breakfasttelevision.ca. Going to take a break. Still plenty to come today on BT.